Hi, my name is Andy Brown, and I'm a keyboardist and a music director and composer. And I'll show you how I, as the instrumental music director for a local production of The Wiz, um, created uh, tracks using Logic and Mainstage uh, to be able to create a very full band sound. Okay, I created tracks, first of all, for most of the songs. Uh, I did that in Logic Pro X. And uh, I started by making rehearsal tracks that the that the uh, performers could use to rehearse with. And you can see that here in this folder stack. Um, I put a very simple uh, drummer track down to help me play on the, on the beat. Um, some simple bass, play the electric piano, and those w went in the rehearsal tracks. And if I mute that and play this right now, you'll hear um, those playing now. Now below the rehearsal tracks, you'll see the other tracks. These are instruments that we weren't going to have play live because um, it's hard to find good string players and um, some of the tubular bells and harps and stuff like that. Um, so these are the performance tracks um, that we'll be playing over top of our band as, you know, and the band included um, drums, percussion, uh, guitar, bass, trumpet and trombone, and me on the keyboard. So I, t I took the orchestral score and I recorded then the string parts that you heard there. Um, so, which is pretty much in this in this musical, um, violins, um, some cello, and I did have some French horn in there occasionally because uh, we didn't have a, a good French horn player either. Um, so the rest of the instruments would be played live. Those are the tracks that would we would play over top of so these would be hidden behind I'm going to show you how I used main stage to be able to play those tracks in the background while the rest of the band played live and we keep those tracks in sync uh, the last track I want to show you down here in logic is the um, our click track and I just made made that using our orchestral click um, which pretty much um, I'll play that for you here you can hear it's just pretty much um, like a clave one two and some three, sticks four it needs to be, your click track needs to be something that the drummer can listen to and not affect his playing style. So you don't want to use like a hi-hat or something else that's going to help him mask what he would normally feel like where the snare would go. So that's why it's good to use sort of high-pitched instruments, instruments that have very sharp attack and instruments that aren't going to confuse the drummer and something that can really stand out in the mix too. So something in the in the tonal spectrum that is different than what in other instruments are playing. Um, the last track I did down here was an audio track which you heard me count in um, and then I also use that in some places where we've got retards like for example right here at bar 76 you can also see on my tempo track here one and um, how the and tempo three drops and there four and, one, two, three, and there's that harp four, one, two. so because as the conductor, I'm also the keyboard player, I'm not able to have my hands free to be able to conduct that retard. So it helped um, for the band to be able to hear me counting out the tempo change in their, in their headphones. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to bounce these tracks uh, to main stage. So first I'm going to mute the, mute the click tracks. Uh, the other tracks, um, I'm going to mute the rehearsal tracks because we don't need those either. We just need the instruments that aren't being represented live here. So Command B in Logic brings up the bounce menu. Um, I bounce them as PCM, uh, IFF format, 16-bit, 44. That all looks good. <coughs> and it's important to do PCM format um, so that tempo information is carried over to main stage. Main stage will then know what tempos I had I had chosen here. Of course, this. This particular track has got tempo changes. Main stage actually won't handle tempo changes, and it'll complain about that. I'll show you in a minute. But now as I bounce that, I can select. I, I made a folder called Bounced, where I put in, um, see, this is the finale. And I can overwrite that. I'm not going to do that right now, because we've got a performance in about an hour and a half that I don't want to affect. But I would bounce bounce my, my backing tracks uh, to that file there, and then I'd come in here. So the click tracks, bounce those as well, the same kind of idea, PCM, AIFF file, 16-bit, bounce those to something called the, the click track there, just like that. Um, let me just hop over to uh, Finder and I'll show you what those sound like. 
So just again, here's the finale, just the click track. You'll hear that. One, two, three, four. So just the click, that goes to its own channel in my sound card so the band can mix that in and however, whatever volume they need. And then uh, the backing track, which you'll hear is the instruments that aren't being played live, but the click track will help us stay in sync with all those. That's pretty simple. So there's the two beatler bells playing along there. All right, now let's hop on over to main stage and I'll show you how that works. Okay. Um, let me talk first about the layout that I made in main stage here. Um, it's based on the keyboard layout, but I've got um, my patch list here. And the way I've organized this show, um, every scene is a set, what they call a set. And then I've got various patches in here. And I've got buttons on my keyboard where I can hop between patches very quickly and easily going back and forth. And I've also uh, attached buttons on my keyboard to be able to start and stop the track like that. And I've also got buttons I can be able to <laughs> stop with a fade out in case we get off on the track or some kind of catastrophic failure. Also my layout here, um, so there's my play and my stop um, buttons. I've got this showing me the amount of time to the next marker. And then oh, I should have showed you in Logic here. In Logic I've set markers up um, for every major section. So there's bar 69 of the finale, there's bar 109. That information, as well as the tempo information, is, is saved in those AIFF files. So here in the finale, I can see that I've got, you know, these, these, these various markers in place. This is telling me the time to the next markers it's playing. I've also got um, a little text area here where I can um, put notes, uh, cues, um, whatever I need to say there. Um, I've also got a very simple uh, mixer that's also tied to um, faders on my keyboard. So as we're playing, if I decide the click's not loud enough or the backing track is too loud at a certain point, I can qu easily uh, reach up and adjust those as well. And then you see the second keyboard down here, and that's important. That is what makes the drums work, because our drums, we're actually playing with an electronic drum set um, running through main stage here. So main stage is an amazing piece of software for $30, what you can do with it. Um, so here in the layout, let me show you how you can, you can create your own layout, how, how you can do this kind of work. So each of these items here, this is, this is my patch list, like I said. Um, if I want to assign a different button on my keyboard to be able to hop between patches or sets, I just click that button, I click assign, I click the button on my keyboard that I want to to be attached to that button and it works. Same thing with the the play button. I hit, I created a button which you can do just by dragging a button onto the interface there and then tell it what you hit the assign button, push the button on your keyboard that you want to be attached to that. Um, that's what you use the layout menu for is is assigning what you know between your keyboard and the screen what you want to control each thing and later in the edit uh, tab is where you actually define on each set what this fader controls or what this button controls um, and so as I was saying down here this keyboard is actually what makes the drums work so you actually if you've got more than one MIDI instrument plugging into main stage you've got to have one more than one uh, MIDI input um, also on your on your layout page here so this one is for the drums so as the drums play you would see uh, keys hop up and down on on this one and then uh, this is another uh, just a list that I've made here and this I use to, to be able to as I, I said show the different markers in the pre-recorded tracks um, so these were made just by dragging in uh, some simple controls here where are they? These were made just by dragging in controls here. So we've got vertical meters and we've got vertical faders. Um, so the right now in the layout mode, they're not attached to anything other than I've said, you know, that this fader on my keyboard will control uh, this fader here by, by doing the assignment. Now, over on the edit page is where we really tie everything together here. So 
let's talk first of all um, we'll look up at the top here this is my concert so I've divided the the performance up into various acts two acts um, which are really two concerts um, I felt like the performance of main stage was a little better if it wasn't all in one massive concert so here's my concert so when you first start main stage it'll just create uh, you know a concert and some patches and I needed to organize that by set because I've got different keyboard sounds that happen on each set sometimes different drum sounds that happen as well um, so you create a new set right here new set and the set um, for example this set for scene 20 uh, which is the entreact it's actually not scene 20 it's um, for song number 20 the entreact now in that set I've played two different instruments which I can easily toggle between the two with using a button on my keyboard the other interesting thing to note is that the drums I don't want to be I don't want the drum sound to change uh, when I change keyboard sounds so the drum instrument is actually attached to the set itself so you see right there um, is, is the drum so you do that let me walk you through that process here so I, if I want to make a new song I've got a new set here um, this set would have a new instrument and I'm saying of the MIDI inputs there's the multiple inputs so Axiom 61 is my main keyboard back there in the layout and the drums is the second keyboard which is why you have to have a second one so I say that this instrument only responds to input from this keyboard which in this case is drums and yep create a channel strip at the set level and I can easily come in here and say it's a uh, it's a drum kit and here's all these awesome drum kits that you get for 30 bucks on main stage and they're really pretty sweet so I can I, I add that in at the set level so then as I add in other keyboard instruments as I switch between those two the drums stay playing um, let me show you one more thing because the drums play in everything I don't want to add um, these memory intensive drum patches onto every single set so I added it the first time and I set set up the drum kit exactly how I wanted um, you know down to you know how I wanted the toms to sound and the balance between the those instruments and then I, I copied that in on the other sets as a um, let's see what is it called I copy that into the other sets as an alias paste as alias so you would you can click that you can copy that that instrument you can paste it in the other sets as an alias so that way it doesn't have to load up um, more instruments that are all the same in in every single set the other thing that happens at the set level this is where you put in the click and the backing tracks as well so that's very easy to do as well let me show you I'll start a new set I can come in here I can take my finale I can actually just click on click on both those at once drag them in and it makes two two playback uh, channel strips and each of these playback channel strips if you click on this you'll see that it, it actually groups them this is important that they would be on the same group because when you hit play on one channel strip you want the other one to play as well so there you can see they're both on group one so now let's also look at the um, how I've set these up these channel strips uh, for the backing for the click track um, real quick because my sound card can handle uh, 10 outputs uh, the first two outputs are are my keyboards so which is why I can attach a a fader to just the keys because those go to their own channel the drums you can see on this they're always attached to three and four um, my backing track is always on channels five and six and the click track is always on channel seven and eight because the click track needs to go to the band it doesn't need to get fed into the house mixer because um, we don't want the audience to hear that as well so now let's look at how I attach the buttons now so on the set level um, because each set is a new a new playback um, channel strip so as I come into the set here I'm gonna attach uh, this button here so I'll click the play button and um, you come down here to your screen control and you attach it to 
to something. So I've already, in the layout mode, I've already said that the play button is attached to this button on my keyboard. So as I hit that, that, that makes that button play. Um, now I need to assign it to do something, and I need to assign it to do something at the set level. So we've got the, I've got the set, I've got the, the backing track and the click track, which are attached to that set. Um, they're not attached to you know a particular patch, and they're not attached to the concert. They're at the set level. So the play button for this set, number 20, the Entre Act, is attached to the backing channel, playback, transport, play from start. And same thing with the stop channel, or the stop button. The stop button is, is attached to stop with fade out. I also come in here, and I attach um, this little this little text box. I say that give me the backing playback um, time to next marker in seconds. Finally, I come in here and I can use uh, the the marker list at the set level as well. So I say that this marker list is attached to playback, and it just by doing that it automatically lists all the markers there. Um, the other things that happen at the set level um, would be the drum fader. So I can click this, and I can say that this is mapped um, to to the drums level this one going to drums uh, volume and then as I move that on my on my keyboard um, it would affect that uh, mapping as well um, backing click the same way those are all attached th these are attached again to faders on my keyboard and they are mapped at the set level to instruments that exist on the set level. So in this case, on the set level is the drums, the backing, and the click. The only things that aren't that don't exist at the set level are the are the keyboard patches that I use. So um, here for each keyboard patch, you'll see that these have got their own mapping. So this one is mapped to classic electric piano volume, classic electric piano level. Um, and it, I find it's helpful during live performance to be able to see um, things happening on the screen so I know that the click should be playing. I can diagnose something if it's, if it's not sounding right or I can see where the levels are at and be able to easily adjust those on my keyboard. Uh, the other thing I do at the set level is attach the text for this. Clicking there on this text box that I created in layout mode, you know, I could make this text box change um, from from the set level, I can make it change for each patch that I use if I needed to put notes about whatever in there. Um, I just use it at the set level because I need to be able to see what is what what the cue is that I'm looking for, or how to how to remind myself um, what's going to happen at the end of the song. So there you go. It's uh, it's performance time, and I can easily pull up any any set that I want, um, any any scene, and hop between the patches I can hit the hit the play button and make it respond and and create the start the click track and the backing track keeping those in sync keeping the band in sync with all the instruments that have been pre-recorded and feeding those through different channels in our headphones so that we can create our own uh, our own mix um, depending on how we like it um, we happen to be using a jam hub is is our our headphone mixer which is a nice little uh, seven channel mixer quite quite cheap actually and it's got seven outputs so you can create seven different uh, headphone mixes and um, so we we've got one one channel is our click track uh, one channel is our backing track one channel is the keyboards then we've got drums, we've got bass, we've got electric guitar, and then we use the, the last channel, and that is actually a feed from the board of the wireless mic so we can hear the performers and we can decide how much we want to hear from that. And all that goes together to, to make a pretty professional and pretty cool sounding uh, setup um, for the band to be able to play along with instruments that we wouldn't have normally been able to have.